Hello and welcome. Tonight we take a look at how Labor's negative gearing policy could affect our housing market. I think it's just an added pinch point that we don't need at the moment. I worry we won't be able to get in. I worry about who we're competing with. We all want more affordable housing, but we don't want that if damages the economy. We can take advantage of it, I guess. I'd still rather vote in favour of the first home buyer. Also, why are we losing the war on waste? I can't believe that it's 2019 and there's a crisis with recycling in Australia. It was entirely predictable. It's not just a problem in Victoria, it's a problem across the whole of Australia. It's a problem across the whole of the world. There's very little transparency about what's happening in these facilities. People don't want to grow up knee-deep in waste. Yeah. The Labor Party is heading into this year's federal election with a policy, policy to drastically overhaul the way property investors are able to use negative gearing. Labor argues that as well as making it easier for first home buyers to get into the market, the changes would improve the budget bottom line. But a report out today is sounding an alarm, as Carrington Clark reports. <laughs> Ready to go. Jordan Bill and wife Belinda live in a rented house in Toowoomba, southern Queensland, with their two children. But they also have a mortgage on an investment property about 10 minutes away from where they live. We wanted a self-funded retirement. Um, we didn't want to be on the pension or relying on the, on the government um, come that retirement years. We wanted to know, we want to take control ourselves. Their investment property is negatively geared, which means the cost of owning the property, including loan repayment, is more than they receive in rent. That they then offset that loss against other income. The Labor Party wants to remove negative gearing for new investors buying existing properties. That won't directly affect Jordan and Belinda, but they're worried the value of their house could drop. I think it's just an added pinch point that we don't need at the moment. It's just pushing us towards pulling that housing market price back. We're going to get lower and lower prices. Louis Christopher from SQM Research was previously in favour of curbing negative gearing, but he now says Labor's changes will hit a property market already weakening. He says property prices could drop by a further 12%. They're going to fall because investors are going to demand some type of discount for the lack of tax concession they once had. But he says it's not just property owners who'll feel the pinch, but tenants may find themselves forking out more rent. It's fair to say that prices are going to fall, uh, and that will help in some respects with affordability. But on the other side of it, when we get into year two and year three, we're likely to see a reduction in rental of affordability. Shadow Treasurer Chris Bowen rejects the findings of the report. I agree with the Treasury analysis. The Treasury has said the impact of Labor's policies would be modest. Uh, we've always said that. Back in February 2016, when opposition leader Bill Shorten announced Labor's policy, the property market was running hot. Labor will help level the playing field for first home buyers competing with investors. And we will put the great Australian dream back within the reach of the working and middle class Australians who have been priced out of the housing market for too long. Labor announced that negative gearing would only be available for newly constructed homes and the capital gains discount would be halved from 50 to 25%. Three years on, the Australian property market is in a very different state, with foreign investment down and tighter lending standards cooling the market. House prices have had their worst slide since the GFC, falling more than 5% nationally last year. Add to that the Reserve Bank's warning that a glut of apartments in Sydney and Melbourne are sowing the seeds of a further decline in prices. The, the risk is that it just adds to the perfect storm around the property market, adds to uncertainty and pushes property prices down even further. I want to make sure that the tax system, which is the federal government responsibility, is working to put first home buyers on a more level playing field. The tax department, the tax system, should not support somebody buying their fifth, sixth or seventh house more than it supports somebody buying their first. In Hobart, the property market is bucking the national trend, with prices still rising. 
Brianna Woolno and Michael Morgan are taking part in their usual Saturday ritual, hunting for a potential first home. Would you be open to living that, that far out? Yeah, definitely. I think we've just got to think a bit outside the box. They've been looking for a year, but keep losing out to cashed up investors. I'm definitely more the worrier. I worry about what our situation will be down the track in six months, 12 months. Um, I worry we won't be able to get in. I worry about who we're competing with. Yeah, for us, buying a house means that we can have the flexibility of having kids and not worrying about it, or even having pets. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's much more of an issue being in a rental property and, and trying to have those freedoms. Hey, guys. How you going? How you going? Welcome. With Hobart's rental vacancy rate super low, rents are going up, which makes it attractive to investors. Yes, it's nice. Yeah, we've just been blown away. So over the last two weeks, we've had over 20 groups through. That's, That's nice, nice, isn't it? Rihanna and Michael are happy that Labor's proposed changes to negative gearing might make houses like this less attractive to investors. But interestingly, so too are the current owners of the property. Siska and Anthony Hocking are also happy that the changes could make property more affordable. All our kids at the moment are trying to get into the market, mm. you know, so just because we can take advantage of it, I guess, you know, go us, but I still wouldn't. I'd still rather vote for the in favour of the first home buyer and what they're up against. Even with the recent price falls, Australian property is still very expensive. For a typical Australian family back in the 80s and early 90s, they could buy an average house for between three to four times annual income. Today, to make the same purchase would take five to six times annual income. And with stagnant wages, the only way affordability improves is if house prices go down. If we're in an environment where the property market is under a lot of downwards pressure, um, one of the last things you want to do is add to that downwards pressure to the extent that it may adversely affect the broader economy. Yeah, we all want more affordable housing. Even I think it's unfair that young people have to pay this much for houses. Um, but we don't want that, that increase in affordability to come so quickly that it damages the economy. Before the election, we'll announce exactly what date uh, this policy will, take commence, will, will commence from. And importantly, every investment, every property owned by people today is fully grandfathered, not impacted by the changes.